Hi friends, welcome back to another video in my October Eve series for 2023. Today we're going to be making my first ever shaker tags with these adorable images from Purple Onion Designs, as well as this brand new Boo paper pad and Boo blend from This Calls for Confetti. I'm also going to add in a few of my very well-loved matte black sequin confetti bits. Um, I'm almost out. I think I have to order another pack. Um, for the tags themselves, I'm going to be using this My Favorite Things die as well as this Simon Says Stamp um, the Bear Tree Collage or something like that. I'll have it in the description for you, um, which actually I got, I think it was from one of Jen Sharkus's, uh like D stash sales a while ago. And then this Simon Says Stamp large standard tag die. So I really wanted to make two different dies. I wanted to be able to use these images separately. I'm also going to end up adding in my that owl from um, Purple Onion Designs as well, because one of these is going to need an extra bonus image on the back. You'll see why in a little bit. Um, but I wanted to start out letting you guys know I am on the Purple Onion Designs design team. And so I am gifted a lot of stamps from them. These ones specifically, I was not gifted. I bought these on my own before I became a design team member. Um, and they do have a sale going on right now, their anniversary sale. I believe it's 20% off. So make sure that if you're interested in these red rubber cling stamps that you go check them out. The links in my description for the store are not affiliate links. So you would, you know, all of that money, all your money goes to supporting the brand directly. Um, I just want to throw that out there too. Um, so for my stamps, what I, or sorry, for my tags, for my tags, what I'm doing is I, I die cut the both size tags with the orange plaid. That's going to be the back of both tags. For my smaller tag, I use the white pumpkin streamer pattern. And for the larger tag, I'm using the black pumpkin streamer pattern. And I'm also making a third layer for this tag that's going to have that um, bare tree silhouette cut out of it. So the black tag is going to have three layers total. Technically, the white tag is two because we're going to make that one a flat shaker. And I didn't think before I adhered my front to my back panel. If I could make that tag over again, I would have not put the orange on the back, right? This step right here, this is what I would skip. I would have made the front part my shaker and then attached them together. And it could have just been the two layers and done. But once I already had it glued down, we just had to make it work. So I'm going to go in with some packaging. And all I do is using my fingers, I'm tearing up the seam on one side of my stamp packaging and then the other so that I end up with two separate sheets. This is me cutting out uh, my extra layer for my flat shaker tag that we're going to make. It doesn't line up exact, but it's pretty darn close. Definitely close enough for me. So I decided to cut off that top edge so that I wouldn't have to worry about the punching a hole for the circle hanger part. Um, and then I trimmed just a tiny bit off of one, uh, the bottom edge and one side so that um, when I added my plastic, everything still lined up really nice and evenly. I trimmed my plastic to be just a little bit bigger all the way around, about a half inch bigger all the way around from my panel. I'm adding my Tombow permanent adhesive to the back one section at a time and then just folding my plastic over. I like to trim the little flaps that are created in the corners so that it adheres more flat, it lays flatter. Then I went to add in my Boo Blend and of course, I got it everywhere. <laughs> so I'm going to just pick some up and pour it in. Then I'm also going to add some of those matte shaker bits. There was one clay piece that was way thicker than the others. So I just fished that out, added in some of my matte black sequins, and then sealed up that last side. Then I will get this added right on top of the rest of the tag. And I really like this idea of this flat shaker tag because it doesn't add any bulk, but it really helps kind of step up 
the the tag. So I think this would be adorable if you are someone like me who loves Halloween and you give Halloween gifts. I, I do give Halloween gifts. Um, and I grew up getting Halloween gifts. The Great Pumpkin would come to our house. <laughs> so like Santa, but for Halloween. Um, so I do give Halloween gifts and I would just pop this onto like a black plain gift bag and add some fun tissue and call it a day. Um, you could probably even skip a card at that point because it's such a special tag. Um, for the black tag, I decided to go a little more traditional shaker, which I don't do often with the foam. So I took this thin, these thin 3D foam squares from Simon Says Stamp and I um, cut each of those line of squares into thirds. So now it's thin height wise and also extremely thin width wise. And then I added my plastic for this one on the back of that silhouette panel, trimmed it so that it fit kind of really nicely all the way around. And now I'm going in and adding those slivers of foam tape to the back. And because I knew that my shaker bits were pretty large and my sequins were pretty, like they're not huge, but they're all, you know, at least a medium size. Nothing is super small. I'm not using glitter, right? Right. I didn't have to worry about anything kind of falling through these cracks. So I just used those little pieces to kind of fill in my shaker or fill in the frame part of my shaker. I want it to connect as close as I can all the way around. And then I'll add just a little bit extra to the corners to help the panel to stay up straight. Then I will take off all of the backing <laughs> once I know it's going to work. And I sped that up a lot so that you didn't have to watch it. Um, I also added some anti-static, magic anti-static brush powder from Pink and Main to the inside to help make sure that nothing was sticking to my plastic or sticking to any of the adhesive on the side for me cutting through that foam. I added all of my shaker bits and my sequins to the pattern paper side like to the actual tag first and this time I didn't really have to worry about any thicker pieces because with the foam there'll be a little bit more room than the flat shaker added some of those same black matte sequin confetti pieces as well and then I will flip my silhouette over get it lined up and the shaker part of my shakers is done and then we get to move on to the really exciting part for me which is coloring and adding my extra little critters. If you are somebody who loves more of like a simple or you don't have time to color, you could absolutely stop here and just leave these as shakers. And if you're someone who is like, well, I, I like these videos, this is fun, but I don't make Halloween tags, um, you could do the same exact technique, but just swap colors and patterns and make these Christmas tags. Even with that bare tree, it's not a Halloween die. That's just a pretty silhouette die. So you could do that in white and let it be a snowy tree and snowy front and do like a Christmas pattern with um, like silver or white or snowflake sequins inside. And it would just boom, you have a Christmas tag. So I added that grass bottom to my white tag and you can see it didn't reach all the way around. Sorry about that fly that just flew into this onto the screen. Um, so that is what made me decide instead of cutting another piece or doing it over again, I was just going to stamp out my owl and add him to the back. Now, these sentiments are from the Tim Holtz. I think it's called Bold Fright. I'll have it again. Everything that I'm using today is in the description down below for you. Um, I love these sentiments. A hundred percent. They should have been added before I did my shaker bits because then there's, you know, they're all uneven and crazy and wonky. Um, I still made it work. I added a little shim underneath with a post-it notepad. It was fine. But in hindsight, if you go to do this, I highly recommend stamping your sentiments on the back of your tags before you add any shaker bits. Um, for my coloring, I did go in with Copics. I have my caps on the screen and I have a full list down in the description broken up by category of every color that I used on these little critters. I started with the bat 
These little images from Purple Onion are so cute. And the detail that you can get with the red rubber versus our like photopolymer, whatever we make our clear stamps out of, is just crazy. The lines are so much thinner. It's so much more detailed. To me, they just look a little more like dainty or delicate. And I love them. Um, I am a Purple Onion Designs fan through and through. They just came out with a really fun summer release in July. I know um, she's working with Stacey Yakula on some fun holiday winter type things, um, which I'm pretty like they do that every year. She has a fun release. Um, so I'm pretty sure that is all happening. And yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know that no matter what season you are creating for, they have some great images and they have that sale going on right now. Um, if you have been hesitant about red rubber because you're not sure how to stamp them or if you have to mount them, I cannot recommend to you enough their mounting stamp. They have a six by six. I think it's a six by six. And then they have an even uh, or a four by six and a six by six or a four by six and an eight by eight, something like that. Two different sizes. That is a photopolymer giant stamp basically and it sticks to your stamping platform or if you have like a giant acrylic block it would stick to that and then your red rubber stamps also stick to that so it allows you to mount it temporarily without having to worry about mounting foam or what you're doing um they're easy to clean i just rinse mine off when they start to get dusty it's a game changer. So don't let that concern stop you from using red rubber if you've thought about it. Um, I decided to go pink I don't know if you guys have heard that term. Probably, right? This year, pink with the Barbie movie and everything else that's going on, pink seems to be a really huge trend this year. And I was inspired by that Boo paper pad that we used with all of the pinks and oranges to try to fully embrace the spirit of pink -oween. And so all of my images I colored with that orange and pink. My owl, I think, technically doesn't have any pink, but he has the orange and he's on the back. And then the front has uh, the bunny and she's got like her little pink superhero costume. So I think they balance each other out. But I thought this was really fun to try a little bit of a non-traditional color scheme. Uh, if you've hung around here, you know I love a very traditional Halloween triadic color scheme. So it was definitely, I pushed me, I pushed myself out of my comfort zone with this one. Um, but I really love how it turned out. So I highly recommend. And if you are somebody who likes cutesy Halloween versus scary specifically, I think that pink is just a really fun trend to try out. I don't think it's really going anywhere either. I could see this continuing on for a couple years. A lot of times Halloween trends kind of stick around for a while. Um, so yeah, I went in and fussy cut out all of my images. That is the one thing about Purple Onions is they don't do um, dyes. So if you are somebody who does like the silhouette or Cricut cut or whatever you do for those more power to you. I just fussy cut them out. None of these had anything too fiddly that I couldn't handle. Um, I adhered my owl to that back part and you can see it covers up that gap in the grass perfectly. And then I used liquid glue to adhere my bunny. I kind of tucked her in between some of those grass pieces too. And I just love how she kind of helps hide some of the shaker bits to start moving everything around. I added the bat to the front of my silhouette right up against that tree. I thought that was so cute. And then you can still see that little trio of pumpkins in the pattern paper kind of through the middle of the shaker. For my twine, I had some Valentine's Day pink and white leftover that I added to my orange and white twine. And again, I thought that was just a really fun way to kind of nod to that pink and feel. I always like to add a little bow of twine on top of my regular kind of pulled through loop that I do. Um, so for one, I went with the orange and for the black one, I went with a pink 
bow. I just thought that was really cute. Um, and don't, again, don't let anybody tell you that you're, if you buy twine at Christmas that's red and green, that you can only use it then. Or if you buy it at Valentine's Day and it's pink and white, that you can only use it then. Like, get creative, mix it up, combine different colors. Um, use your stash, man. <laughs> we only have so long to craft in our lives. Um, so yeah, these are my little shakers. I was inspired by Amanda Garrett from the Sweet November Stamps um, design team. I think her thing is Little Pink Caboose. Um, I'll tag her as well. She made the most amazing shaker tag and I was like, oh my God, why haven't I tried that before? So thank you for the inspiration, Amanda. I hope that you guys have the most amazing week and as always, happy crafting. Thank you.